Well, I'm gonna move the show right along. I'm gonna bring up a good friend of mine who is a great comic. I have fun, fun comedians for you tonight to, to view and to have a good time with. And this guy just got back from the West Coast where he was performing at the uh, Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach. And he was at the uh, Improvisation. And he was at, oh, yes, I knew that it impressed the likes of you, sir. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's good, we'll have somebody over to towel you off in a little while, okay? This guy's a great comic and soon to be your friend. Please, a nice round of applause for Mr. Tom Gilmore. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh, we're having a good time, aren't we? You people are going to have to cheer up just a little bit because uh, it's nice to be back in New England. I was out on the West Coast. I drove to California and back, my wife and I. Good test of a marriage, I think. Uh, I wanted to fly. My wife said, no, let's drive. I want to see a little bit of the country. Yeah, when you're driving through Iowa, Nebraska, you pretty much want to keep that camera right on the seat beside you at all times because every thousand miles or so brings another unique photo opportunity. We got along pretty good though, actually, until we had car trouble. You know, we got a flat, we're out in the middle of nowhere, it's raining. My wife starts crying. She's going, I hate this. I knew this would happen. I want to go home. Then I started to get upset because I thought you'd never get those lugs off. <laughs> it's counterclockwise, honey. Come on, will you? Uh, you got to make time when you're on a long trip like that. I, I got back, I went to visit my parents, and I don't know about you, whenever I go to visit my parents, my mother makes me feel like I'm nine years old, you know? I had all these cliches when I was growing up. She'd say, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. I've talked and talked until I'm blue in the face. I always said, hey, Ma, if you didn't say it a thousand times, maybe you wouldn't be blue in the face. <laughs> I got my face lapped a lot at that age. It's weird now if you look in the papers, if parents hit their kids now, they go to court, they go to jail, stuff happens to them. That's a little foreign to us, isn't it? Let's face it, when we were growing up, getting your face lapped was just considered good discipline. Right? We cared enough to beat you. <laughs> Someday you'll thank us for it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Not that nostalgic about it, really. I haven't gone home yet and said, say, Ma, don't you beat the crap out of me just for all time, sir? <laughs> uh, it's weird, though, because they wouldn't hesitate to hit you, but they didn't want you to fight with other kids. Right? My mother actually slugged me for getting in a fight. I'll teach you to hit people. Whack! <laughs> I think you already have, Ma. <laughs> but I see that rabbit punch again. You know? They gave you stupid advice. My mother'd say, if anyone picks on you, you just say sticks and stones will break my bones. Names will never hurt me. That's a good way to get the hell beat out of you. <laughs> hey, don't call me names. Why not? My mother says you should hit me with a stick or something. <laughs> and mothers and fathers had a totally different approach, too, about getting you to behave. You ever notice that? Fathers at least were easy to understand. It was a direct threat. You know, I was like, why do we have to do this? Because I said so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We know what that meant, because I can beat you within an inch of your life. <laughs> Mothers, it was more of a guilt thing. It was like, we don't ask you to do very much around here. <laughs> I can only say that 20 times in one day before you wised up and said, yes, you do. You ask me every five minutes. <laughs> well, you're younger than I am. <laughs> so isn't most of the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Well, I only have two hands. Hey, what the hell do I look like, an octopus? <laughs> Father said it was for your own good. Mothers were more concerned with what the neighbors would think. Right? I don't want you over there at supper time. The neighbors will think we don't feed you. <laughs> Go upstairs and wash your face. The neighbors will think we don't have plumbing. <laughs> I wanted to say, he might have to go to the beauty parlor. They'll think we don't have mirrors either. <laughs> and they asked you questions they knew you couldn't answer. You'll never learn, will you? That's highly speculative at this point, Mom. <laughs> I'm only five. <laughs> Why don't you get back to me in a few years? Another difference was when you wouldn't behave for your mother, she wouldn't tell you to stop. In fact, she'd dare you to get into more trouble. Oh, you just keep it up. <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> I intend to. <laughs> my mother gets so mad, though. She wouldn't even call me by my first name. You know, it's just, you're on thin ice with me, Buster. You better watch your step, mister. <laughs> Ma, it's me, Tom, remember? 
and they tell you stupid things when they're mad too. I'm your mother! Please don't remind me. <laughs> I'm not going to speak to you again. Good. <laughs> Worst thing my mother do, though, whenever I wouldn't behave, she had this thing, she'd pick another boy in the neighborhood who was perfect, then compare me to him. You know that thing? My kids was this kid, Bobby Sullivan. Whenever I wouldn't behave, my mother'd say, I'll bet Bobby Sullivan wouldn't talk to his mother like that. I'll bet Bobby Sullivan always eats his vegetables, you know. What that was supposed to do is make me feel bad. Or better yet, make me wish I could be more like him. All it did was make me hate this kid's guts, you know. <laughs> And I said to figure, there's got to be something to be gained from this. I figured, next time I want to go to a party, my parents won't let me go. All I have to do is tell them Bobby Sullivan is gone. They have to let me go, right? Just so I can hang around with this kid who's so perfect. <laughs> you ever tried it? You know, for some reason, it never quite worked. You know, you go, my, you got to let me go to this party. Everybody's going to this party. In fact, I hear even Bobby Sullivan is going to go to this party. She'd just say, well, if Bobby Sullivan jumped off a cliff, would you jump with it? <laughs> no, but I might give you a push. <laughs> My father used them too, usually about grades though. You know, like we'd get our report cards. He'd look at my marks and go, if Bobby Sullivan can get straight A's, so can you. And that's isn't true, it isn't fair, you know? I just wanted to say, say dad, if the Rockefellers can make millions of dollars, <laughs> so can you. <laughs> what are we doing living in this dump? <laughs> I said I wanted to say that, I didn't actually say that. I wasn't a good student in school, I'll admit that. Worst subject I had in school is biology. Because biology, they made you dissect animals in there in order to see how they worked. I never saw any great need to know this, you know? I liked animals, I had pets, I wasn't that curious about their internal organs. When I got a puppy, it didn't occur to me to go, say, Dad, get the scissors. I want to see what makes this dog tick. That's good, son, you're curious, you know? You could get by in most of the classes just by learning like one key phrase that would vaguely answer a lot of the questions. You know, you weren't exactly right, but they couldn't call you completely wrong, that type of thing. I got through two years of biology just by knowing the word protoplasm. And then, what do we find in this portion of the cell? Protoplasm? Well, that is true. It isn't the answer I had in mind. I went, hey, sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> They got wise to that, though. Remember, they give you a lecture about it? You know, you might think you're getting away with something, but you're only cheating yourself. Like, we're gonna look stupid for not knowing this. Somebody's gonna come up to me and go, hey, Tommy, how long were a frog's intestines? Any idea? <laughs> no, not a fan. <laughs> really cheated yourself, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Waste of a good life, I'd say. Of course, when we were that age, say 13, 14 years old, we were all pretty mean to teachers, right? Even I'll admit that, but I think most of you will agree. We saved it up for substitute teachers, right? <laughs> when I walked in and saw a substitute, immediately flashing in my mind was, anything goes. <laughs> I was nervous, though. I wouldn't say anything unless she said a certain phrase first. Something like, oh, it seems your teacher's forgotten to leave me her lesson plan. That's all I needed to hear. Next day, the headlines read, Substitute Teacher Dies in Bizarre Cult Ritual. <laughs> Fair game as far as I was concerned. And there wasn't much they could do to punish you, right? That's the whole thing. By the time I was in school, there was no more corporal punishment. They weren't supposed to hit you. All they could do, they could give you detention, right? keep you after school. The only threat there was, hey, no doing your homework in here now. <laughs> Haven't done it all year. <laughs> what makes you think I'm gonna pick right now and begin? Then if you kept fooling around, then they get real tough. Then they could suspend you. Then you won't be able to come to school at all. Ooh. What do they do if you really screw up? Send you to the Bahamas for three or four weeks? <laughs> Sometimes they use peer pressure, right? They try to turn the rest of the room on you, your own friends. All of a sudden, it's all your fault. Like, well, no one's going anywhere until Mr. Gilmore sits down. I just wanted to say, don't fall for that old ploy, man. She can't stop all of us. Let's rush her. <laughs> Thanks a lot, I had a nice time. Good night. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's Tom Gilmore, ladies and gentlemen. There you go.